All right, what's up, fellas? And uh, welcome to September 2022. Uh, welcome to our coaching video for Proverbs Triple X Club. Thank you for taking the time to uh, take a few minutes this month to look over our coaching. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 7. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And as always, make sure you have a Bible, a pen, and paper, something to write notes on to jot some things down as. Uh, we come across some things, you can always pause the video, um, but as always, want to encourage you to take some time to look through the scriptures, cross-reference some things, just take some time to meditate and think about the things we're looking at. I want to talk to you this month about something that I like to call, So Help Me God. So Help Me God. Matthew chapter 5, verses 37 through, uh, man, I can't even think straight this month. Matthew 5, 33 through 30. Seven, Matthew 5, 33 through 37. Let me go ahead and read it for us. It says, Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black, let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. Now, I want to do a couple quick things as we jump into the text. The, the first thing, um, as you look at the Beatitudes, um, particularly uh, in, in Matthew chapter 5, as you're looking at this very, very famous, well-known um, section of Scripture, Jesus um, several times says, you've heard that it was said to them of old, la da la la da right? Um, it's interesting, if you grew up like I did in a traditional church, you grew up with the King James Version, and you might remember or have memorized these verses as you remember that it was said by them of old. Um, and then as we look at newer translations and start to understand what's being said, what what the interesting thing that, that's happening here is Jesus is basically saying, you, you've heard that it was said to them. It was said to your fathers, Right. Clearly, um, the people that Jesus comes to minister to is speaking to the Jews. The Jews know, they understand, they have a framework for knowing that God spoke to their fathers. In the wilderness, he spoke to their fathers by prophets. Um, he spoke to their fathers um, through, through judges, through men of God, right? Um, we look at the first chapter of Hebrews, long ago, and in many different ways, the Lord spoke to us by our fathers, the prophets, right? But at these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. And what Jesus is doing is he's saying, listen, God spoke to your fathers, but I say to you. And if we're not careful, what we can very easily think that's going on here is it was told to them one thing and I'm telling you something different. Or it was told to them one thing and I'm giving you the understanding of that thing. But what Jesus is literally doing is he's saying, God spoke to your fathers and now God is speaking to you because I'm speaking to you. So Jesus is not only teaching and explaining um, the, the principles and the laws of the kingdom, uh, how to embrace this kingdom, how to live and flesh out this kingdom, but he's literally equating himself with God. He's, God spoke to your fathers and I'm speaking to you. In, in this section that we're looking at this month, he's talking about oaths. He's talking about um, the things we say, the way we promise, uh, the way we try to elevate our word um, so that people have confidence in us or trust in us. And so the whole idea is taking oaths. And, and what Jesus is saying was, was told to you in the Old Testament, what I'm telling you, what I'm explaining to you and teaching to you now. Uh, and it's all about um, our, our words and our, the weight that our words have and the fact that people trust our words and there's um, there's consistency behind it, there's reliability behind it, there's trustworthiness behind it. And so uh, I call it, so help me God. And, and there, there's two reasons I do that. Number one is because, um, so help me God, this is the way I want to live, right? This is the kind of man I want to be, the kind of, of way I want to speak, um, the kind of words I want to have, the weight that I want my words to have with people. And number two, um, so help me God, we all know the whole idea of uh, being sworn in, taking an oath, maybe going to court uh, or to perform your, your public duty, whether you're swearing in for a, um, a position that you just won an election, whatever it is, you put your hand on the Bible, right hand up, right? Do you 
do promise to swear to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States, you know, so help me God, right? As God is my witness, as God is my great help, this is what I intend to do. So the whole idea is, men, I want us to live this way. I want you to live this way. This is the way I try to live my life. So help me God. So a couple things I want to look at. Uh, verse 33, again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, right? The whole idea is don't swear to do something if you know you're not going to do it. Don't don't give your oath or your promise knowing that you're going to break it, right? Sometimes uh, we do this. We see it in culture. Sometimes we do the little white swear falsely when we're talking with our kids, right? Make promises. Um, you will not swear falsely. If you're going to swear, if you're going to perform an oath, um, you have to perform to the Lord what you've sworn, right? That's what it, verse 33 says. You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn to him, right? And so in this first verse, we see that, that God spoke to them in the past. He spoke to them about their oaths. He spoke to them about what it meant to give their word. He spoke to them about what it meant to promise something and to be able to fulfill that. We see that in Luke, um, Leviticus 19, verse 12. Leviticus 19, 12, it says, You shall not swear by my name falsely. In other words, if you're going to take my name, you better take it for real. Right? You, and if you are going to use my name and make a promise or make an oath, you better do what you performed. Right? Um, and he goes, if you swear by my name falsely, you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Right? So this whole idea is, man, if you're using my name as sort of the proof that this thing's going to get done, you better fulfill your oaths. Because if not, you, it's not just your word that it gets tarnished, but it's my name that gets tarnished. Um, so do not swear by my name falsely. Deuteronomy 23, 23 says this, you shall be careful to do what has passed your lips for you have voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God what you have promised with your mouth. So the whole idea is remember the words that come through your mouth. You better do those things. You better fulfill those things because God's going to hold you to it. People are going to hold you to it. And especially if you're adding the name of the Lord to your oath, um, then you had be better be very, very careful to perform the words that you promise to perform. It's all about keeping your word, right? Being a man of your word. The whole idea, um, I'm a man of my word. My word is my bond. You know, the whole idea of shaking hands. Um, my word's good. My promise is good. If I've told you I'll do something, I'll do it. So God spoke to them in the past. That's what Jesus is saying. The Father spoke to you, and this is what he said, and this is what he meant. And it was about keeping your word and honoring your word and not taking the name of God falsely. That's the whole idea behind the commandment. Do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Don't do it for vain purposes. Don't do it just for show. If you're going to take my name, live by my law. Live by my word. Follow me. Honor me. Do the things that I've called you to do. So God spoke to them. He spoke to them by their fathers in the Old Testament. And then Jesus says this, but I say to you. So that's the second thing. God spoke to them, but I say to you, right? So now God authoritatively through his son, Jesus is speaking with authority from his father, right? He's been given authority um, and he's speaking to his people. And we see what he says in verses 34 through 36. He says, but I said, you do not take an oath at all. Don't take it by heaven because it's the throne of God. Don't take it by the earth because the earth is his footstool. Don't take it by Jerusalem because it's the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head for you cannot make one hair white or black. So this whole idea is in the Old Testament, listen, um, be very, very careful to do what you said you would do, especially when you take my name on your lips, right? Don't profane my name by not doing the things you said you would do. And, he, and now he's saying uh, not necessarily something different, but he's saying, listen, the reason you got to be careful with oaths is because if you don't fulfill your word, you profane my name. Don't take an oath by heaven because it's God's throne. It's not your throne to take. It's not your authority to give. So we don't take an oath by the throne of God. Don't take it by the earth because it's the footstool of God, right? The earth is not yours, as though you control it, as though you swear by it, as though it's yours to control. Don't take an oath by Jerusalem. It's the city of the great king. You're not the great king, right? Um, so, so don't swear by, by authority and power that you don't have. And don't take an oath by your head because you don't even have authority on your own head. You can't make your hair white or black. I can make it gray over time, right? Um, but the whole idea is, he says, don't make oaths 
Number one, by my name, not fulfill them and profane them. And then don't make oaths by things that A, don't belong to you. And B, things that are outside your control. If you're going to make an oath, um, your word had better be good. Because if it's not, you profane my name. And, and these other things that you love to take oaths by, um, they're outside your control. You don't own them. They're not yours to swear by. They're mine is what the Lord is saying here. Um, I spoke to your fathers. It was said to your fathers, I'm speaking to you. And the third thing um, is simply this, mean what you say, be consistent. There needs to be, man, consistency in the things we say, the promises that we make, um, the things that we tell our families that we will do, the kind of men that we love to tell our wives that we'll be, the kind of fathers that uh, we love to to tell our kids will be the, the, the way that we want to live up to the words. It's easy to boast. It's easy to say something in public. It's easy to make a promise, but it's not always easy to fulfill those things. So be careful not to make oaths um, on things that don't belong to you, things that are outside your control. Mean what you say. Be consistent. Look at verse 37. He says, um, instead of making oaths by my name, like I told your fathers and profaning my name when they don't fulfill it instead of making an oath by heaven, which is not yours, instead of making an oath by the earth, uh, which is the footstool of God, instead of making an oath by, by this, by Jerusalem, the city of the King, which isn't yours to control. Instead of making an oath, even by your own head, you can't even change the color of your hair. Instead of that, simply let your yes mean yes, right? Let what you say simply be yes or no. And notice how he finishes that. Anything more than this comes from evil, right? Anything more than just, listen, if I said I'll do it, I'll do it. If I said I won't do it, I won't do it. If I said I can't do it, I can't do it. Any more than that, any kind of promise beyond that proceeds from evil. In other words, um, evil uh, motivation an evil desire to um, sort of trick someone or swindle someone, um, take advantage of someone, try to give yourself leverage in an argument or maybe a situation, maybe involving business, uh, a conversation. You're, you're trying to, to prove yourself right, whatever it is. Anything more than just simply saying yes or no proceeds from evil, evil intentions. And what Jesus is saying is, he, is like, listen, just be a man of your word. If you say yes, mean yes. If you say no, mean no. And I want to make a few observations um, on this real simple stuff this month, right? Uh, real simple. Um, think about this. Why do people make oaths to begin with? Think about that. Why? Why do we say, man, I swear to God. I swear. Right? Why do we go beyond just saying yes or no? Um, for whatever reason... It could be because something that someone's saying is unbelievable, right? It could be the actual content of, of the thing being said that it's unbelievable. And so we say, man, I swear to God, I really, really saw it. It could be that it's unbelievable. It could be that the thing being said is outrageous, right? I caught a fish this big. I can't even fit in frame, right? I caught a fish that big. No, I swear I really did, right? It, it could be that those things are so outrageous in nature or so unbelievable in their scope, in, in, in what we're saying. But more likely, um, it's the simple fact that the people saying these things are themselves unbelievable. And there's un, they're unbelievable. We are unbelievable for a couple of reasons. Number one, maybe we have a history of inconsistency. May we say yes uh, and we do things at times. May we say yes and we don't do things at times. May we say no. And, and we're good for our word. And then sometimes we say no and we go ahead and do it anyways. There, there may be a history of inconsistency with what we say and do. It may be that our walk hasn't always matched our talk, right? It could be inconsistency or it could be a history of dishonesty. It could be that we say yes when we really mean no just because we're trying to, again, win the conversation, win the argument, get our way, um, sort of trick someone into believing us or trusting in us. Uh, and for whatever reason, we feel the temptation to swear by something. Man, I swear to God, I swear by heaven, I swear by whatever it is, right? 
and think about that. If, if, if the person doing the swearing feels as though they need to make an oath, that they need to go beyond um, what is normal and just saying yes or no, it's almost as if we're giving ourselves away that there's a reason to not trust our word, that there's a reason not to fully trust in what we're saying. And what Jesus is saying is, listen, when, when you're making these oaths, when you're talking to people and you're giving your word, man, don't swear oaths by these things. All this stuff proceeds from evil motive, right? Just learn to let your yes mean yes and let your no mean no. And, and the hard part about that is, is if I have a history of inconsistency, if I have a history of unreliability, if I have a history of dishonesty, it's going to take time for me to build up a reputation or to build up character or to build up a history of being honest, of being a history of being consistent, a history of being a man of my word, a history of being believable, a history of being trustworthy, like credit with the bank, right? It's the same thing with people. What does our word mean? Listen, men, our word is like strength. It's one of the foundational things of, of who we are. And, and if it doesn't mean anything, if our name doesn't mean anything, if our word doesn't mean anything, we've lost. Uh, we've lost the confidence of others. We've lost the confidence of, of our wives, of our kids, of our family, of our friends. We, we've lost the confidence of men in general. Um, if, if anything more than yes and no is necessary, that's, it proceeds from evil. That's the warning from Jesus. You've heard that, that God spoke to your fathers and this is what he meant. Like, be careful that you don't profane my name when you're taking oaths, right? But Jesus, like, man, the, the whole point is, like, everything you say, you should do. If it comes out of your mouth, you should do it. But all that's necessary should be yes or no. That's it. Anything more than that is evil, proceeds from evil. And so a couple of practical and, and tactical things um, to think about this month as we, as we look at this, um, the whole idea of making oaths, the whole idea of of uh, giving our word, promising uh, to people, saying that we're going to do things and doing those things, following up on our words. Uh, a couple things. Number one, you cannot live your whole life based on what God told someone else. Just practical, right? You've heard that it was said to them of old, but I say to you, right? That's a word from Jesus to the people he's talking to. And so as I was sitting there thinking about that this week, um, how important is it to know that, man, God's speaking to me? Um, that Yeah, it's good to know that he spoke to the fathers and talked to them about oaths. And it's even good to know um, that, that he, what he said to the disciples. But what's he saying to me? Um, How is God speaking to me? And I'm not talking about some kind of private interpretation. I got a new revelation, a new word from the Lord that's outside of Scripture, that's extra biblical, um, private prophecy. I'm not talking about any of that. It, it's all about the fact that I'm in his word on a daily basis. I'm on my face before him in prayer. Um, that I'm getting a daily word from God, that I'm communicating with God, that I'm um, fellowshipping with God. You can't spend your whole life um, either living on what God told somebody else or, or, or living on even what God told you yesterday or what God told you a decade ago or the, the leftover fruit that you have um, from a previous, a previous walk from God. It's like me going to the gym this morning uh, thinking that I, I can bench press, you know, what I could bench press 10 years ago just because I used to be real strong. But if I don't maintain that strength, if I don't get after it in the gym, there's no reason I have to believe that I'm going to be able to, to lift at that same weight. And if I can, I might even hurt myself, right? It's not enough to live my life based on what God gave someone else or maybe what God gave me in the past. Um, one takeaway. Number two, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Live life within the confines of what you have control over. The whole idea of, of not taking an oath on, on heaven, heaven's not yours to control. The whole idea of not taking an oath on, the, on Jerusalem, it's the city of the king. It's not your city. And even your own hair, white, black, brown, gray, or red, you, you don't control the color of your hair. Um, you, 
you don't, you don't have control over these things. So be careful um, to live your life within the confines of the things that you actually control. You can waste far too much time in your life thinking about, talking about, and theorizing how to fix things that you have zero control effect and influence over. Stay in your lane, man. Live your life based on the things that you can actually influence, the things you can control. And going back to our text, let your, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. What you can control is your word. What you can control is the decisions that you make every day. What you can control are your disciplines. You can control your habits. You can control your diet. You can control your exercise level. You can control what goes in your eyes. You can control what you do with your hands. You can control what you read. You can control how much sleep you get. You can control where you spend your free time. Stay in your lanes. Focus on the things that you have control and authority over. Uh, wasting your life thinking about things outside it is just that. It's a waste. Um, it, it's a waste of energy. It's a waste of effort. And some people can, and we can try to figure out things to the point where we battle anxiety and depression for things that we literally have zero control over. And yet there's so many other things in our lives that we can control that we're neglecting. It's like when any, anybody ever asks me about if I believe that there's life on other planets, um, if I think we're the only ones in this immensely vast universe and and I don't, I don't even like to talk about those things. I don't even like to think about those things. And it's real simple, man. If God wanted me to think about that or God wanted me to know that or how to deal with that, he, he would have let me know, right? We can, we can speculate. We can theorize. We can get into what I like to call the realm of the ridiculous and try to figure stuff out that we will never, ever, ever be able to figure out. Or we can concentrate our lives, our minds, our hearts, our lives, our energy, our focus on things that we know things that we can know for sure, and things that we can control. The Word of God, right? Our responsibility to live it out, to preach it, to teach it, to live it, to share it, whatever. Um, I can control that. I can control my life and my decisions. I can control how I respond each and every day to, to opportunities that the Lord gives me. I can control those disciplines, those daily disciplines. So we need to, to live our life based on what God's told us, not what He's told someone else. And what he's told us today, not what he told us yesterday. We need to stay in our lane, focus and concentrate on things inside our control and not outside. And then number three, be consistent, right? Be consistent. That's the whole idea behind this whole text. Yes or no. That's all I need. If I said yes before, it means yes today. If I said yes, I'll do it, then I'll do it. If I said no, I can't, then I won't. My word needs to be my word. We need to be consistent. You ever heard the phrase, steady wins the race, right? It doesn't have to be flashy. I don't have to be famous. Not everybody has to know who I am. I don't have to sell a million books. I don't have to make a million dollars. Steady wins the race. It's about daily discipline. It's about doing the little things over and over every single day. That makes a world of difference. The, what, what, um, distinguishes the, the major leaguers from the guys that don't make it to the major leagues is the major leaguers ability to make all the routine plays. It's the ability to make all those plays over and over and over and over again without error. Whereas the non-professional maybe can make a great play, maybe can make a lot of plays, but he doesn't make all the routine plays consistently. Um, I, I have a friend who, uh, we used to talk, he's a, he's an army guy and, and he was, uh, spent his career in the army and we will always talk about soldier stuff and different things. And, and he would tell me, you know, the difference between, you know, regular soldiers and, uh, and special forces guys is special forces are guys are good at doing everything. They're good at doing all the small things and they're doing, they're good at doing it consistently. They're good at doing the little things over and over and over and over. And so many times we, we, we think the little things are, Oh, that's easy. It's, it's little. I want to move on to the big stuff. And, and sometimes we neglect, the little things and the little things matter. You know, everything from making sure your uniform's right and your shoes are shined and your gun is clean um, and you're following orders and you're doing exactly what you're told to do. Um, steady wins the race. Daily discipline is what matters. We need to have discipline in our faith. We need to have discipline in our family. Um, we need to have discipline with our body. 
disciplined with our resources and how we use them and spend them and allocate them. We need to be disciplined with what we do with our time. We need to be consistent, right? Consistency, although it may not be sexy, consistency honors the Lord, right? Because consistency means obedience and obedience is a mark of faith. Faith is trust in the Lord. And so consistency honors God. And number two, it's going to be a blessing to others, which in turn will glorify the Lord, right? Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good deeds, your good works, then they will glorify your Father in heaven. So don't forget that, guys. Don't live your lives based on what God told somebody else or what God told you yesterday. Make sure it's fresh every single day. Stay in your lane. Worry about the things that are within your power, within your responsibility, within your world, right? Exercising dominion over what God has given you and be consistent. Make sure your yes means yes. Make sure your no means no. Be a man of your word. Be consistent. Thanks again for taking some time to watch our coaching video for this month. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and also click on that little bell so you always get notifications whenever we publish new materials. Thanks again one more time for joining us this month and pay attention to coming announcements about some things that are starting back up this fall, especially for all you guys who live in Northeast Florida. For everybody else, I look forward to connecting with you again.